Raila Amolo Odinga will be running for the presidency of the Republic of Kenya for the fourth time in August this year. Raila Amolo Odinga turned 77 last week and the entire country celebrated that birthday. President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta was personally present at Raila Odinga's residence to celebrate the day with Raila Odinga. And according to sources and those who were present at that event, President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta kept on referring to Raila Amolo Odinga as the fifth. As a matter of fact, most Kenyans also refer to Raila Amolo Odinga as the fifth, which means Raila Odinga must win in 2022. And if he won't win, Raila Odinga will have to pack his luggage from Nairobi and head for retirement in Bondo. So Raila Molodinga is actually doing everything possible to ensure that he becomes the next president of the Republic of Kenya in August this year. He has already unveiled his campaign board, which is a complete departure from his previous campaigns. I did a comprehensive analysis about that new team. Raila Molodinga also, also in Kasarani, officially announced that he was going to run. And of course, it was expected. On Saturday, Raila Amolo Dinga will formally launch his campaigns in Thika. Again, I will do a comprehensive analysis about the Thika event. And for those who've been following Raila Dinga's politics in a long time, it is now clear that he has developed a new strategy. That strategy is aimed at ensuring that he wins the presidency in first round. Winning the presidency in first round means defeating William Ruto by 50% plus one vote. It's not going to be easy for Raila Molo Dinga to achieve that. But he hopes to do, to do that. Remember, Raila Dinga is going into this particular election with the baggage of uh, being a, a perennial loser, for example, and the fact that the former Nasako principles are not with him. But he's also going into this election for the first time as someone who has the support of the deep state. The deep state is what Raila Dinga supporters believe has always denied him the chance to lead this country. So Raila Dinga is going into this election as someone who has the support of the deep state. And I've explained severally here that the mere fact that Raila Dinga is appearing as a deep state project means that his supporters are going to get out in their large numbers to support him. If that was not clear, I can assure you, Raila Dinga would have found it difficult because majority of his supporters would not have even bothered to go to vote. He has developed new strategies. So in this video, I want to reveal to you guys the new strategies which Raila Molodinga has adopted, which he hopes will help him win the presidency in the first round and defeat the deputy president, Dr. William Samaya Raputo, who is also keen on ensuring that he becomes the next president of the Republic of Kenya. But before we do all those, if you're watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two, click the subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support. Without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. So my humble request to you guys is, is that you just keep on giving the videos thumbs up. For those who can, drop your comments. I always take time to respond to some of them. And I read all of them. And the best is also you, if you can share these videos to your friends. We are about to reach 150,000. It is my hope that probably... We should hit that so fast. Now let us sit down, grab some popcorns, then listen to the new strategies which Raila Mulodinga has adopted. The first strategy which he has adopted, in my view, is that Raila Mulodinga is dropping the orange color. Color is very important in politics. For example, today in this country, if you meet six people and five of them donning yellow colors walking 
you associate them with the UDA party. So that's how powerful colors are to a political party. In the last election, anytime you saw anybody with the red color, you just knew that person belongs to Jubilee. Whenever you saw anybody donning orange color, you would easily conclude that that person is actually an ODM supporter. So the question is, why would Raila Odinga drop the orange color? Personally, I loved orange color. I still do. But I don't use, I don't don orange colors most of the time on this platform. I have so many orange t-shirts because most people will associate me with the ODM. Sometimes I don them, sometimes I even don UDA colors, orange colors. I mean yellow colors, for example, my wife loves yellow colors. If you come to my house, you'll always find yellow colors there. Yeah. So, why would Raila Odinga drop orange color? He's dropping orange colors because, number one, Raila Odinga wants to bring new political formation. So he doesn't want ODM to be the dominant party. Number two, which is the main thing, is that Raila Odinga is now trying to turn blue, which is the color of the Azimio, so as to attract the support of the larger Mount Kenya region. The people of the Mount Kenya region were made to believe that ODM party, the orange color, were bad. So most of them would not vote for orange or ODM. So basically, Raila Odinga is giving them a chance. The other thing is the coalition building. Raila Odinga hopes that by dropping orange colors, which is the colors of his party, the other parties joining can easily adapt the orange colors and will help him in branding. For example, if you go to Transoya, yeah, there's a party called DAP. It will be easy for them to don blue colors. You go to Pokot, for example, where Lunyangapur is and he has formed these pol political parties. They can easily adopt the new color. You go to Mount Kenya region, PNU, they can easily adopt the new color. But what about the Jubilee in uh, Mount Kenya region? Again, because the color Jubilee is not well received in the larger Mount Kenya region, they can easily drop the red color and adopt the blue color. So I think the idea of Raila Dinga dropping the orange color is magic for him. So that's the first strategy which Raila Dinga is applying. The second strategy is the zoning of the regions. According to the information available, Raila Dinga has zoned regions. So there are regions which are blue. Blue basically means his strongholds. Like when you talk of Nyanza, you talk of coast, you talk of Western Kenya. Not all parts of Western Kenya, but where he, he has strength. So he has identified those regions and he's building his campaign strategy on how to ensure the highest voters turnout in those strongholds. Then he has also zoned green. Green is the battleground where ODM or Raila and Ruto can battle. Anybody can win. Like, for example, in the last election, Kisi was a battleground. UDA, I mean, Jubilee was able to get win in Nyamira, the presidential votes. If you didn't know, Jubilee won in Nyamira, ODM won in Kisi. This time around, it has been Kisi, Gusi region in general, both Nyamira and Kisi, has turned into his stronghold. But take, for example, Masai, Masai region. Masai have not really embraced the Ma community have not really embraced UDA. Some of them, majority of them, are in ODA. So where do you place the Ma community? So this is a group which is considered battleground, where they can have equal fighting chance. Places like Northeastern, Mandera, Garesa, Isiolo, Railo Dinga has zoned those as battleground, where he can go and compete with the deputy president. He has also zoned the red regions as weak points. Like for example, if you go to Kericho or Bomet, they will definitely vote for Ruto. So he's weak there. 
So Raila Odinga is, is designing a strategy which will help him maximize so that he doesn't really concentrate. Like in the last election, we saw Raila Odinga concentrating in uh, Mount Kenya region. Well, he knew so well there was no way he was going to get the vote in Mount Kenya. Today, Mount Kenya is turning out to be a battleground. It means Raila Odinga can invest more resources in the Mount Kenya region in the hope that at the end of the day, he will be able to win. So he has zoned that. I'm sure even the DP probably has zoned the regions. So that in the next campaign, his, his campaigns, he will figure out that do I put more efforts in my strongholds because Ruto is gaining there? Or do I focus on the battleground? My stronghold is, is, is weak, is strong already. Or do I go for the weak, where I'm weak, put more efforts there? And is it necessary for me to put efforts in places like, for example, Kericho? Or I should just put small efforts there, but not much. So zoning is a strategy which he has employed. The third strategy, which has even confused the DP, is coalition building. You know, William Ruto built a political party called URP. He entered into an alliance arrangement with Uru Kenyatta through TNA. They formed the government. Then in 2017, William Ruto, in his own wisdom, decided that they needed a much bigger party which was going to sweep majority seats. So he merged this URP and Uru merged the TNA. They formed one political party called Jubilee. At the end of the elections, Jubilee had the majority members of parliament, the majority governor, the majority, MCS, everything. But this election, William Ruto is saying that he's going through his own political party. So Raila Dinka decided, let me use that opportunity and build coalition. So Raila Odinga is building a Zimio La Umoja movement. The idea behind the Azimio La Umoja movement is that any political party can join as long as they can support Raila Odinga's bid for the presidency. For example, someone like Lonyanga Pio Puo will be told, okay, join. Go and campaign for your bid, but support Raila Odinga for the presidency. Peter Munya with his party PNM will be told, okay, go outside there, campaign, but support Raila Odinga for the presidency. Go to other places. And in fact, that is why William Ruto has also been changing his tough stand on the issue of coalition. He's now started saying that he's willing to join hands with Musalim Davadi, with Weta and the rest. So Raila Odinga idea of coming with a coalition will help him also to deal with the departure of the former Nasako principles. And number four is regional kingpins. If you follow Raila Odinga's campaigns in the past, he really didn't have what can qualify as regional kingpins. He had key political leaders. And some of these political leaders were strong in the regions. This time around, Raila Odinga is building regional kingpins, something akin to what NAC did. You go to coastal region, you'll find Hassan Joho. King is, is in. You go to Western, you find uh, Oparanya, Eugene Wamalwa. You go to Kisi, you find Ongwai being propelled there. You go to Western, I mean, you go to Mount Kenya, you see Munya there, you see Peter Kenneth propping up, you see the face of Uru Kenyatta. So basically, you go to Kambani, Raila Odinga is coming up with Gilu, Mutoa is coming up with uh, Professor Akibutha Akibwana. So ideally what Raila Odinga is doing is that he's building a super alliance. And by building super alliance, it's going to create regional kingpins. Some of these regional kingpins are just as powerful as they are, not even beyond their counties, but specifically in the, their counties. And lastly, and this is important, Raila Odinga has designed now a new strategy of reaching out to the youths. He was in Bomas for his birthday party, a meeting organized by the youths. Yesterday, Raila Odinga also held a meeting with the youths from Kiambu. Most of these meetings are town halls. What Raila Odinga wants to do is that he wants to appeal to the young people. He wants the young people to refer to him, to see him, to view him as a father, Baba. And that strategy, in my view, is likely to work. If, the, if he can spend time with them, 
ya yeah, like youths from the larger Mount Kenya region who not spare their time previously to, to listen to Raila Odinga, the truth of the matter is that the time Raila Odinga will share with them, he will explain himself. Most of them will start viewing Raila Odinga differently and will win their support. And that's why he's always been consistent in his messaging that Baba, Baba, Baba. So the youth in this country will be told to view Raila Odinga Kama ba, Baba. I don't know what you think, but in my view, those are the strategies which Raila Odinga is currently using. If you are watching this channel for the first time, please feel welcomed. What we do on this channel is that we analyze politics in a way you can't find any other place. So the only place you can get this kind of analysis is on this channel. So the best thing you can do is just to click that subscribe button now. So that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue to thank you guys for your continued support. Without that support, this channel cannot be where it is today. Because of that support, we've grown. And I want to really appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. The best thing and what I want to, from you is that we give this video thumbs up. Just click that thumbs up button now. If you can drop your comment, drop the comments now. You can also suggest for me what you want me to analyze next. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Bye bye.